Yeah, Greetings, up. everyone. Uh, this is Arcasters number 75. We're getting up there in numbers. And let's see, who do we have with us tonight? We have out in Colorado, we have Jeff Lafferty. Hey, everybody. Greetings, everyone. Uh, this is Arcasters number 75. Oh. We're getting up there in numbers. And let's see, who do we have with us tonight? We have Hold on one second. In Colorado, we have Jeff Lafferty. <laughs> There, but okay. just mute him for a second, Scott. Greetings, everyone. Uh, this is Arcasters. Scott, I need you to mute Let's see, who do we have with us tonight? We have, oh, is it Scott? Hello, we have. Yeah, it's him. Just mute him for a second. Right. Just mute him for a second, Scott. Greetings, everyone. Uh, this is Arcasters. Oh, my God. Scott, what is going on? Scott, hey, Scott, just close that window okay. out. Hey, Scott, can you close it out? Just a second. Just <laughs> yeah. I don't hear it well, anymore. I mean, that's, that, yeah. That's a okay. good intro for Extreme on the Cloud. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll, okay. we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we we had some technical difficulties, but we got Scott, our guest, on. But first, we'll get to him in a minute. Um, so, so Jeff. <laughs> How's it going, Jeff? Oh, good. <laughs> I'm still hearing feedback. Well, are you? No, uh, I don't hear it anymore. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Oh, we'll figure this out. Yeah, we tried to hammer all this stuff out, but um, that's okay. All right, so out in Portland, we've got two people out in Portland. First of all, you guys all know Kevin. Kevin Cross, Monkey Mod. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks and, for coming uh, on the show. It's wonderful. And uh, Josh isn't with us today. He's got a concert or something he's at. But uh, also out in Portland, we have Scott Campbell, the window painter. Now, if you guys, I know a lot of times we have comic book artists and things on, on the show. And uh, this is a little different today. And you guys might not be familiar with him, but I would definitely recommend that you check out his channel because it's, it's awesome. It's like, to me, it's like everything I like in an art channel because it's sort of, you know, he's, he's teaching how to do artwork. Uh, he's also, it's almost like a, a vlog. You put out what, Scott, you do like almost daily videos practically, right? Or can you hear me, Scott? I'm, I'm getting some feedback. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. It's like it's playing over again. The same thing is, is your, let's see. Do you still have those YouTube windows open? Yeah. Okay. Close out, not the hangout, but close out the YouTube windows. And tell me if you have that problem anymore. Yeah. You still have the problem, or is it? Huh. So close it? Yeah, yeah probably just close the YouTube window. I'll leave the hangout open. That might solve it. Hello? I can hear you. Okay. You you okay, you're, you're, you're good now. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, I know how that is. I've done that many times before. So uh, anyway, so uh, what, what was I saying? Oh, I was just saying that, that uh, the thing I would like about your channel is that it's, you know, you do the art tutorials and you show how, how you do the window painting, which is really fascinating for somebody who doesn't really do that kind of stuff. But but you also, it's, it's, it's like you're... I mean, what you do, because you, you do go from business to business painting these windows, so it's it's and you vlog about it. So every day is like a different thing. And it's really cool because, you know, you've got just the different people interact with you and come up to you and see your win windows while you're painting. And it's, it's just a really cool channel. So I would, I would tell everyone to go check it out. Um, but anyway, so I don't, I'm trying to figure out exactly where to start because we've learned some things I didn't know about you. Um, but you've, you've been, you've been doing window painting for a minute, right? You've been doing it for a little while now, among other things. Which we, yeah, we over 40, about. over 40 years. So wow. you're, yeah, definitely not new to this. And I thought I've been doing this kind of stuff for a while. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to turn my, just a second. Hello? Are you there? Yeah, yeah we can hear. We can okay, hear. okay. Yeah, I started in 1976, Christmas. That was, uh over 70,000 windows ago wow. <laughs> and uh, the first one was pretty bad it was it was a uh, picture of Santa Claus saying happy holidays with his left hand on his right arm and everything was backwards and 
<laughs> this, it's just time in. But I, I really, about two and a half years ago, I sort of branded myself as a window painter and uh, decided to teach on YouTube. And I just love it. I love the, the subscribers and the people. And it's really, really wonderful. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I thought I heard in one of your videos that you mentioned something about being an animator. Yeah, well, I've done a little bit of animation, and that's kind of what I, I consider myself more than anything as far as I'm, I used to be an illustrator, but I, like I was talking about early, earlier, I uh -huh. sort of uh, got out of that, you know, just from, uh, just from doing Windows, I learned how to work fast and big, so, right. and the tools are different. You know, I used to use Repidiograph pins, <laughs> and, you know, the... The, the regular dip pens, the ink pens, and brush and ink, and, and I worked small, yeah. and, and that's when we didn't have computers and anything. We used to... Uh, Paste stuff and stuff. We made stats. They were called stats. You know, right. we, we didn't make enlargements of stuff. And I did have a comic strip in the uh, a local paper called The Downtowner years ago, and uh, that ran for uh, about eight months. But uh, it was a character I created called Portlandosaurus Rex. And... Uh, <laughs> It, it was really cool. I mean, I have, I don't have any of the, I gave away all the original art, but I used to do it every Sunday. I would, uh, I would sit down and, and I would draw out these, uh, you know, I figured out the script and everything and do the pencils and the inking and, you know, put on the film. We used to use that chart pack film, you know, you cut it out and for uh, different shading and stuff. And I did it every week. And I think they paid me like $15 a week for it. But it would take me all Sunday to to produce it, to make it, to make the strip, you know. Yeah. So, but after that, I just, I did some animation. I, I have some stuff in like, uh, I think the Sick and Twisted Film Festival and some couple little things. But I just uh, sort of lost interest in that and just really got into my windows. I love painting windows. And then I've done my art cars, too. And uh, our, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about. I'm curious, like, because I remember the Sick and Twisted Festival, and uh, I know Kevin has a friend who does that kind of animation. And did he just did uh, Jim Luhan? He just premiered premiered his movie, right, with Bill Plimpton? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Scott. It, well, maybe I'll just call you Extremo, and we'll get to that. Because <laughs> we got two Scotts here. <laughs> you can call me um, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll call the. Circling circworks. I don't know, uh, but uh, anyway, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with Bill Plimpton. Oh yeah, sure. I yeah, I've actually I I met him. Just I'm not. I didn't sit there and talk to him, but I've been to his shows. He's had yeah. like presentations here in Portland, and yeah, he was just here. Um, oh wow. Years ago, yeah, a friend of mine um, through YouTube and. Um, making DVDs and giving them to Bill Plimpton at, at like comic conventions and stuff like that. Um, Bill f is also in his work and they just debuted a, a movie here in Portland at the Laurelhurst. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty, amazing. Yeah. It was, it was pretty awesome. Do you know a guy named Webster Colcord? No, I don't. That doesn't sound yeah, I think he works he for a stop motion animator. Yeah. He's an animator. He was the director of that, film it didn't go over real big it was called monkey bone okay. oh yeah yeah, yeah. It had some really cool eye candy and visual stuff but i guess the storyline wasn't that impressive to people but yeah the movie yeah i saw the movie he also animated Sorry. the spiders on um uh, minority report with uh where they chase uh, tom cruise into the bathtub the spiders and they go up the stairs and stuff and, <laughs> right but uh, he made a film that I'm in with one of my first art cars. Oh, cool. uh, it's called Backyard Barbecue, and it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty weird. But he's had that like in different festivals and stuff. But That's yeah, awesome. I'm a, I was all about the art car thing. And, yeah, you'll have to explain because I, I really don't. I mean, I kind of have an idea based on what you told me, but just for our audience, what the art cars are. Well, it's just basically taking a car and uh, giving it a, a theme of some kind. Uh, one of my cars was called um, Dicotta Car. It was um, it was half cute and half evil. 
so it was like split down like right down the middle like one side was was evil and twisted and the other side had little cute cartoons and bunnies on it and things like that and uh i used to drive it around and god that was i don't know 20 years ago <laughs> i used to drive around portland with a little bear mask on and i <laughs> i i drive around and i would pull up That's to weird. somebody like one time there was these two girls fighting on the street and I pulled up and I said, Hey girls, you know, it's not very nice to bicker. I'm the safety bear. Try to be friendly to each other. <laughs> and they were just like freaking out. But anyway, that sort of evolved into extremo and I just got worse and worse. <laughs> Okay, so now now you've got to tell everyone about Extremo because Kevin knows because he's well he's it, touring and just living in Portland. But well, Extremo yeah. Extremo was born in 1996, and basically, uh, I was already starting to do the clown thing, starting to drive around, and I really liked doing the clown thing because it was just you know it's disturbing and it was it was yeah fun. But anyway, um, I. Uh, there was a contest they had. There was a local radio station called KNRK. It was a 94.7 KNRK, and they played alternative, you know, kid stuff, you know, like butthole surfers and things like right. that. Things, you know, in the, uh, you know, in the 90s, the mid to late 90s. And uh, anyway, they they had a contest. They said, you know, take our logo, take our logo, and uh, you know. Get it, you know, promote it, promote our logo, promote our station for, for 30 days. And whoever does, does the best job wins $10,000. So, so when I first heard it, I thought, oh, I don't want to do that. I, I said, but I'm doing that anyway. I'm driving around acting like a nut. So I decided to <laughs> take my van and turn it into the Karen or K van, you know, the Karen and K. And then their theme was like, 94.7 extreme radio and so that's where the name extremo came from so i became extremo the clown the 94.7 clown and and uh, and so i drove around and i i would paint the logo logo on businesses and stuff like people's businesses and because i tell them hey i'll give you 25 bucks off your window of splash if if i can paint on your uh paint this on your window and they're like sure so like on Mike's driving, I had the KNRK logo, and then on my van, I had the names of all these bands, you know, and 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 just, and so I drove around for thirty days. I just did all kinds of crazy things. I went to schools, I went to events, and I was like, and then you're supposed to videotape everything. You're supposed to videotape it and like um, document it. So I ended up doing that too, and I had a video, and and then you, you we went to this. Uh, this uh, this event where everybody presented their videos, and uh, it was really funny. This one girl who was in it too, she she put like KNRK stickers all over her car, and she made a video. But in her video, she's like driving around, and I'm in the background of her video in my. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. But anyway, and I ended up uh, I ended up uh, I was I was at the event and I was watching it. And I was with my wife, and I was like, I, you know, I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna win, so I'm gonna go eat at the buffet. They had like a little buffet, and I, I block my teeth out with this black stuff. So usually, if I eat it, it screws it up. So I ended up, uh, I told my wife, I'm gonna go eat, and I'm not gonna worry about. It. But as because I'm not gonna win, there's no way, because there was some really cool stuff. And so I went to do that, and they they started to announce the winner, and and it was me. So I was like, "What the hell?" I was just like, I was so shocked. I I almost fainted because I didn't expect it. <laughs> it was ten thousand bucks. Yeah. So it was pretty exciting, but but uh, so that's the name where it came from. But then I just kept doing stuff, driving around, acting crazy, doing events, and ended up doing it for like. 10 years, got on TV, was on Monster Garage, Travel Channel, ABC News. I just did all kinds of stuff. But then a couple of years ago, I just decided I had enough and 
I wanted to start teaching uh, window painting, you know, on YouTube. And, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I had some other stuff going on too. Like I had a show in, in LA called Extreme Oganza at the Grand Central Art Center in Santa Ana. Had 130 paintings. I planned it for two years. We had uh, 2,000 people at the opening. And I built a UV 3D fun house too that people walk through as part of the uh, show. We had like 12 art cars there and just, I think nine bands played during my art opening. It was actually three different places. The first opening was on the Sunset Strip at a place called the Key Club. I mean, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, there was, <laughs> there was that. Then I had a show at the Grand Central Art Center uh, which is a pretty popular, uh, or no, it was a, a gallery called Copernason. It was a pretty popular uh, lowbrow gallery. So I did the gallery scene too, it's extremo, and did all that. But then I just, I grew tired of it. I grew tired of doing the fine art. So I really, I just do windows now. So, so the whole time, the whole time while you were doing extremo, you were also doing windows. Too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I was doing. I've always done windows. It's something yeah. I do for a living. But yeah, I was I, also doing these art shows and running around being a nut. And just, <laughs> just, I mean, I've done some wild stuff. Like at the naked bike run, I was on top of my car naked with my clown nose. I had two clown noses: one from my nose and one from you know down there. <laughs> and this, this is a funny story. But I decided to go early. Nobody showed up. So here you have this naked clown, this old naked clown. I mean, 60 year old, and I'm on top of my van, <laughs> dancing around to disco, <laughs> naked. And it's by that, it's by this park, you know, in this neighborhood. And people are driving by, going, "What the hell?" Calling the police, and people were like looking out of their windows at me, dancing around naked. <laughs> It was wild. <laughs> and, then, uh, <laughs> and cops were driving by, but they wouldn't do anything because it's, it's going to be the naked bike thing, right? right. <laughs> but it was wild. And then all these all these people start coming up and like, oh, it's Dreamo. Anyway, these girls come up. <laughs> and anyway, the clown nose had fallen off my, my member, and it's just laying there on top of the van. <laughs> this girl comes up and goes, Extremo, you got an extra nose? So I gave it to her. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> but I, I think when I get like that, I just don't, I don't have any feelings. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like being Trump, but positive, not <laughs> like, you know, I have no. I don't know. It's not like I'm a sociopath, but it's just like I'm in a dream or something. Like I don't, I don't get embarrassed or. Right. You know, I just because even after after everybody left on their bikes, it was crazy. I didn't put my clothes back on and I just started driving away in my van, and then I got stuck in traffic, and because <laughs> the bikes were leaving now, so nobody could go. So I'm naked in my van and I'm playing <laughs> Hendrix like Foxy Lady, right? And it's fucking. It's just blaring, and because I have these external speakers, and people are like, "What is that?" And some people haven't seen my van, and I jump out of the van naked, <laughs> right on Halsey. I'm dancing on the street naked to Foxy Lady. I'll get you. <laughs> some are laughing, some are running, some are scared, some are mad. You know, people. Just, oh man. Oh yeah, they just. It was. So <laughs> oh, freaking out. And then oh, this, man. Lady, this lady comes up and goes, Scott. Scott, you're Audrey's husband, right? My wife's name is Audrey. <laughs> you're Audrey's husband, right? I go, yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh well, hi. <laughs> anyway, I've had a lot of ex weird experiences like that. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty wild. <laughs> maybe I'll do a maybe I'll do a sketch of Extremo. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look up some Extremo uh, videos. <laughs> you said you you said yeah. you took down most of the probably all the ones where you're running around naked. I'm guessing. 
<laughs> yeah, those ones those ones aren't up, but the, the local TV uh, they did a story on me and they or they, they had a picture of me on top of my car, but they blocked out my stuff. They have this little like fig leaf, <laughs> like digital fig leaf. But uh, <laughs> a, a good video to watch if you want to see one of my art cars is uh, it's called Extremo the Clown's Car. It's a really cool video, but it shows the the waterfall because it has a waterfall on it, and uh, it was it was really cool car. It's it's gone now, but now I have the I have the van. So, what kind of a car was it? Uh, the original car was a, a Mazda six two six. That was I've had a few of them, and then the the car I have now is a uh, it's a Chevy Astro van. And uh, nice. Is uh is stuff like built on the car or is it just like painted? Well, I do this all the sculptures out of clay first. So I, have, oh, wow. I have a sculptor too. Let me see if I can get some pictures of. See, there's some some of my work here. Oh wow! Oh neat. So, I, and I do a lot of uh, you know FEMO and different things, and but I do these sculptures, and then I. Uh, Oh, here, let's look up here. The lighting's kind of weird, but this one's pretty bizarre. Here's one I'm working on here. I don't know if you can see it. Looks like, oh, I thought it was like Donnie Darko. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does look like the, like the, uh, it's pretty twisted. But these ones are actually originals, and they'll go on the van. But, uh, oh, neat. Yeah, I just, I don't know if you can see any of these other ones. But so I make them out of clay, then I make molds, and then I cast them in uh, in uh, resin or, or rubber, and then I glue yeah. them to the van. So. That's cool. So what happens, like, when you, like you said, the van's gone, like, do you sell the thing later or something? Or? When I what? Yeah. Like what happens like when you when you get rid of the car because you said the, the car was gone i mean oh, like, the last oh, car I, the one car i just took everything off of it oh i see i okay. kept a lot of the stuff and got rid of the car but but uh, i think with the van i'm either going to sell it or give it to a museum or do something with it yeah because it, it the van is called the uh, fantasticus down here if anybody wants to look it up but it's just it's like fantastic but with a us on the end you can see it does it make everything oh it's backwards no we, see it. On we the see it normal you yeah, just see oh, okay i see it backwards or you see, you see it right way so yeah so is that the, is that the van that you drive around on the show that same one that's the one I used to drive. I don't drive. I don't drive it around anymore. I, oh, okay. I used to work out of it, but uh, but now it just sits. And I, I drive it once in a while to the gas station. I'll put some gas in or something. Or, but uh, yeah, I just I had to drop out. It was just so. Oh man. I mean, I really enjoyed it, but it was just it was just like. It was too euphoric. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I didn't, at the time, you know, I like now. I'll drink once in a while, have a beer every couple months or something. But at the time, I didn't drink, smoke, do coffee, nothing. I would just go in these binges where I would just drive around and laugh all day. Like I've done it in L.A. too, where I would just drive around in my car, like, and laugh. And uh, it was great. But after a while, it was like it was almost like I lost touch with the. The calm side, the you know, the left side of my brain. Right. Yeah. And so I, I quit about two and a half years ago. I actually started meditating for a while. Did that for about nine months. And then uh but yeah, my life is pretty focused now. I don't really do a lot other than I just I draw, I sketch for fun. And I and uh I paint windows and make videos. That's about it. As far as your sculpture, have you ever uh, worked in like foam, like polystyrene foam? 
very little. Yeah, because I've I've done a lot of that. Because I've done, I used to do like movie props and things like that. And it's funny because a lot of things you're talking about, I've I've kind of done, but you know, I've done. I haven't like run around naked as a clown, but. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I actually my first, I think the first art job I ever had was painting a window. It was for this comic book. It was when I was in high school. It was for this comic book store, and they like paid me in comics or discounts on comics and. It wasn't great, and I didn't know what I was doing because, like, I, I like drew it. I drew it out, and like, if you, if anyone's seen Scott's videos, it's like he's, and it seems like that's probably the only way you can really do it and, and be successful at it is to do it like really quick. But you know, for me, this was my first time doing any kind of painting like that. So I drew it all out, and I put it on the front of the window, and I actually painted on the inside of the bin window, so everything was in reverse and everything, and you know, so it's really cool. It's cool for me to kind of watch your videos and learn the techniques and you have some really really interesting techniques like the way you like lay everything out with like a roller uh-huh it's like instead of a paintbrush if you've seen this video he's like he takes a roller and he puts the background because i guess i guess to make it more opaque you have to usually have to put like a white background yeah exactly yeah and then you then it's like you do you just use your fingernail to sketch it out, or or is it a raised yeah. little razor? Yeah, I do. Uh, I just take my finger and I just like draw, draw it out with yeah. my finger. So, so he puts like the basic shape out, and then he sketches everything out by cutting away at the paint, and then he'll put another coat on, and then I mean, you you kind of have to watch it. It's really interesting the way he does things, and like when you do the letters, how you kind of sculpt your letters with like a razor blade. Yeah, get, like sharp angles and stuff. It's it's really cool, and you're really good at typography too. I I really like, you know, some of that st stuff that you're doing. Yeah, I just kind of developed my own way of window painting, and it's really different. It's not I'm not really a sign painter, and uh, I I have such so much admiration for sign writers and people that do gold leaf, and you know, you see this fancy lettering and everything's all precise and i i don't have that ability i mean that would take me years to even even with what i do know it would take me years to develop that skill and uh just like what you guys do it take me years to learn how to do uh illustration again to develop that you know and so like i said earlier it's just Whatever you do all the time, you get good at it. If you spend eight hours a day doing fine art painting or illustration or computer design, that's what you're going to get good at. But but I I always come I always came back to Windows because it's just it's just what I love. I mean, it's just it's it's so exciting. It's so easy. And as I get older too, it's like people. You know, I take less jobs that I don't want to do, you know, because I can afford to not take every single job because I'm not young anymore and I don't have to. Like when I started, I'd paint anything. I would do anything they wanted. And even if it took me all day, I would do it. But now I just, I talk people out of doing stuff and talk them into, like this week I did, I did a girl playing softball and some kind of hippie looking guy and I did Bigfoot and, you know, it's like just you know, weird characters, a big Mexican guy eating a taco and just, I try to come up with images and things that excite me. Yeah. And I notice it seems like a lot of the times you go to a job site and you it almost like you don't even know what you're going to do until you get there. And that's, what's kind of cool is it's like you come up with it on the spot, like, Oh, I'll do this. Or you suggest this, or, I mean, I'm sure sometimes your clients want certain things, but I've yeah, seen how, how you kind of take their ideas and like, oh, we can do this and all that. And it's like, it's really cool because it's just like on the spot and very little like sketching and just seems like you just, you come up with an idea and you're at it, you know? Yeah. Some people call and they're just, they're, they don't know who I am or what I do. And they call and they're like, okay, can you come by and we'll discuss it. And then maybe you can do some sketches or show me what you had in mind. And then I have to just sort of, inoculate them i have to tell them you know i don't work like that i just kind of show up and i will suggest to you what's best you know and yeah. i try to remind people that the most important thing is 
you have two seconds to grab someone's attention and yeah. that's what your focus should be because that it's like with illustration you have it in a magazine or a book and people are sitting there and they're looking at it it's like an experience it's like they're going to a film or, you know they, they have time to digest it and emotionally connect with this beautiful illustrative work and and it's like that doesn't work with window painting because your audience you have two or three seconds they're in a car i mean you're going to have some walk by but so it has to be big bold eye-catching and crazy and so i try to convince people of that and you can you know i tell them you can like this job i did with the bigfoot you know these guys it was for a place called hydroponic tomato and they wanted uh they wanted seeds, but then they wanted vegetables. They kind of didn't know. And then they're like, they know how I am. So they're like, just do your thing. You know, you got the vibe. <laughs> but they mm -hmm. but they were like, yeah, we want to show grandma maybe planting some seeds. And so I did a big, a big foot. And then, and I told them, I go, well, instead of doing the seeds and showing a field, cause that's gonna look like a brown box from the road. They said, we don't care. We, we're not trying to get attention. We just want it to be illustrative. So then I made it more like a scene and I did more, uh, the characters were more, uh, they weren't as animated and bold. So I, I did, uh, I did a more illustrative looking old farmer guy. And then I did, a uh, uh, his wife, his wife was kind of almost blind and she's handing the seeds to, she's like, Hank, is that you? Is that you, Hank? You know, there's word balloons. It's basically a comic strip. And Bigfoot's like looking over, grabbing the seeds. And then Grandpa's <laughs> on the other window saying, where is that darn woman? You know, so it, it's narrative. It's <laughs> illustrative. It's a comic strip. Yeah. So in that case, it, sometimes it is different. But in most cases, I always tell them big and bold. So I'm trained to do that, you know, instead of, you know, a lot of detail or illustration or, you know, I, I try to do what's going to work. How'd you get started doing that? Did you, was there somebody that kind of got you, showed you sort of the basics or did you just go for it or what? Oh, did someone show me? Yeah, like in the beginning, how'd you get started like painting windows? Like did, did you have somebody kind of like help you along in the beginning or would you just go for it? No, I just did it on my own. I started in 76 and I, um, my brother used to paint signs and he used to do uh, windows and uh, I started, uh, I just did one and it was, looked really, really bad, but I, I did have a little bit of skill, you know, and a sense of flair and design, but I still had to learn the medium. You know, we all have to learn medium. Yeah. You know, we, nobody just comes out of the gate knowing how to do, you know, realistic portraits or, you know, cartoon or animation, you know, it takes time, whatever your field is. So I just, I did them every year during the holidays, these windows for 10 years. And then I moved to Portland in, um, in 86 and, uh, I ended up, uh, leaving my job and just started doing it full time. But I did signs too. I did banners. I did illustration. I did anything to supplement my income. But then eventually I weeded out things. I, I got rid of, I stopped doing posters. I stopped doing banners. And uh, I ended up just doing windows. And then the older I got, the more successful I became. And I ended up doing, I stopped doing illustration. I stopped doing murals and just doing windows. But I've always been interested in cartooning and, and you know, and, animation even though i'm not doing animation i like the way it looks and yeah and, uh, i like to have that ability to like if i go up to, and i love google man because you, you know with my smartphone i just take my smartphone and i can like you know girl girl playing little league softball yeah and images and there it is i just you know, or I had to do some stuff for Safeway, you know, their Monopoly promotion. And so I just, Monopoly man, or if I need a picture of a football or a toothbrush or a, you know, or a, I, you know, I have tons of reference for anything. 
Yeah, it's way better. I'm mean, back in the days we used to keep those morgue files, but you can't really bring those with you, especially if you're doing mobile stuff like you. So that, I mean, that's it's also good. Like if you've done like if you're doing like conventions, because people come up to you if you're doing commissions and they're like, draw. Can you draw? I don't know some obscure Marvel comic book character, and like I don't know. But then you just pull it up on your phone and like, oh yeah, I can draw that guy. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. So are, are most of the are, so most of the techniques that you use to paint windows, did you kind of did you say you kind of developed those yourself? Because it sounded like you were saying that a lot of other window painters don't really do it the same way you do. Because I mean, that was the fascinating thing I think when I first started watching your videos, or just some of these techniques that I had never even considered, you know, as far as I've done I've done some sign painting and some window painting. I've done a fair share of murals and things like that, but just some of the stuff that you were doing, I'm like, oh wow, man, that makes perfect sense. But I never even thought about doing it like that. Yeah, it's from it's from forty years of trial and error. Because I used to use when I used to draw, I would use um, chalk, like carpenter's chalk. Mm -hmm. They come in sticks, or they they're like half rounds, like a little mm -hmm. half round thing. And I would draw on the window with chalk, and you know, and then I it was kind of like how an animator would do it. I would look, you know, I would look for searching lines. I would make a bunch of lines and then I would choose the lines. And so that's what I would do. And then I would do the white. And then I, I don't think I drew in the white though at the time. I would just like, like kind of sketch it out with the chalk and then I would do it that way. But then about 12 years ago, I stopped using chalk. And I just, like I do now, where I just, I draw it with the roller. And I I don't feel any, it's like I have no fear or apprehension about it because the worst thing that could happen is, <clears throat> I, I don't like it. So I just would <clears throat> take my razor and scrape it off. Yeah, that glass is just so forgiving. I mean, it's exactly. just like, Boom! You, I mean, you mess up. You just take that razor blade, and it's gone, and in, in an instant, it's. And I, I, I said that when I worked with on murals, it was like, oh, it's, it's. You really can't mess up because you just paint right over it. But, but those, but doing it on glass is just that's a whole other level. It's like, mess up. Well, it's gone. Like, <laughs> it doesn't take any time really to, just, at least the way you do it, to to correct mistakes or anything like that. So it really is cool. It's just like sculpting your. You're drawing. You're putting in the shapes, and then you you go around with the razor blade and and define it and everything. It, it's just really cool. Yeah, I I enjoy it. I love the freedom, and and so it's uh, so when I'm drawing it, like sometimes I'll just I'll draw it, and then I'll have maybe the character's arm sticking out this way, holding a flag or something. Then I'll go, oh, I don't want to have a flag. I'll have make it a candy cane. Or I'll just maybe have his hands behind his back holding a flower or something. You know, sometimes I change them that much. Like, they evolve, you know. And uh, I love that freedom. Like, or if I do a character next to it, like if I do a character next to another character, I may change the other character, which affects that character. And I scrape off maybe its legs or whatever. Or I decide I don't want it to be a dog. I'm going to change it to a cat or... And so it's so fluid and and because i work fast i don't have any fear about like people go what if you make mistakes and I just scrape it off yeah yeah <laughs> and i think part of that is because i'm basically i'm just when i was younger i was more prone to anxiety and i was really sped up and and so over the years speed equated with success and money, which is different than illustration. You know, a lot of times, I mean, not in most cases, but I mean, in most cases, it is true that with illustration, it's not as quite as sped up always. Sometimes it's, you know, you want to just produce something that really communicates, you know, in an illustrative way, and that takes time. Yeah. You know. But still, I, I think even with illustration, if you can do if you can do it fast, um, the faster you can do it, the better. As far as you know, if you're especially if you're doing stuff for like clients and things like that, like the, the adage you get first you get good, then you get fast, then you get good and fast. 
Yeah. It's fun. I love sketching. Like I, I was on Instagram for a while, but I had to get off because I just got too involved. And, but I was auctioning off stuff, sketches. You know, I would do these sketches, you know, like something like this. And then I would say, okay, auction start at a dollar. <laughs> and it was fun. I mean, sometimes I'd only get like five bucks, but I think I sold one for $30 once. It was just a little sketch. Or, and that was kind of fun. So it does it does have a definitely a plus point if you're quick. And I'm definitely imaginative, you know. So that really helps too. Yeah. But I don't know I like I said before I did the comics, but I don't know if I could keep it up now cuz I'm so like I said trained to do big and fast. I don't know. If you can do fast comics, there's that's, that's comics. I don't know. I think you probably be pretty good. Maybe do a web comic or something, because you know, typically comics take a really long time, and if you're quick, you know, people see that consistency and grab some eyes. Yeah, I think I think I'm good at the sketching part, but I'd have to relearn inking. Like when it comes oh, right. to my windows, I'm really good at inking. I'm really good at doing. Um, uh, yeah, like when you're laying down the blacks and stuff. Yeah, I'm really good because it's big and I'm using a brush and, and it's funny. Like now, mm -hmm. if I really have to do an illustration or, if I you know have to do something that has to be illustrative for some reason, for somebody, I actually what I do is I get a big piece of wood, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I put it on an easel. And I, I, I sketch it out on the, the, on the piece of wood, uh, the drawing, like in pencil, and I get it uh -huh. kind of how I want it. And then I take my brush. I mean, this, you're talking about a three by four piece of wood. And I draw it with my brush so I can get those clean, thick and thin lines. Yeah. And, then I, and then I photograph it and I take it into Photoshop. <laughs> Huh. And, and so once I get into Photoshop, I can drop in all the colors and everything. But it's for me, it's easier to do it on this big board, take a photo and go through all that than to actually take a, a dip pen or a little brush and try to get the lines. Right. I, I just I lost that ability. I mean, I could I could get it again, but. Sure but it would take practice and time you know so it's inter interesting though you know like a lot of like the old illustrators used to paint human mongus you know like nc wyatt and stuff you always see them standing up against the easel painting a piece that's like four feet tall and stuff you know yeah you know. but as far as sketching small i can draw you know i just but inking is such a art you know inking I guess that's why in comics, a lot of times they have one guy that does the pencils, one guy that does the inking, one guy that does the lettering. Yep. You know, they're different. Uh, they're different art forms. You know, yes. and and I definitely would have to practice to get that that ability to do that again. Yeah. That's why it takes Kevin and I so long to do comics because we do all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we, had, so we can just pass it over to somebody else to do the inking and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's an it's an art. But I do I do love doing it on Windows. To me it's it feels almost just it feels pretty much kind of effortless. You do a comic strip, the first comic strip on glass. Just get big sheets of glass and those will be the panels. And... <laughs> I could totally do that. I could totally do that. In fact, that's that Bigfoot video I made this week. It's a couple videos back. It's called, I think, Bigfoot and Grandma or something on my YouTube channel. That that basically is a comic strip. It's completely painted in on one side, the background, everything. There's a whole background of trees and plants. And so there's no, on one side, there's no window because they wanted to, they wanted it to block it in completely. So for, it is a comic strip basically and it has word balloons and so yeah I could do that if I took a picture of that it would be done and 
you know, if you think about it, I painted that window in three and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. So it would, it would take me probably two days, if not longer, to do it, you know, small. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't even have to do it small. You, I mean, then you, like, I mean, you've done that performance art stuff, but just that, that's, you know, when you watch stuff on like YouTube or Facebook or whatever, it's always the, the unusual stuff that people haven't seen, people using unusual mediums and things. And that's the kind of stuff that like goes viral. But like, man paints comic strip on giant size sheets of glass or whatever, and then it goes viral, you know? <laughs> it's just. <laughs> yeah. You won't believe what this artist uses to paint on and all this, you know. But I see that kind of stuff time and time again, you know. Like, yeah, when I, I work for a company called uh, the Lipman Company, and they it's a party supply store, and they um, their window is pretty big, and I usually do it in two days, and uh, it's probably forty feet long, I'm sure, and about ten feet tall. And it takes me a couple days, and, but sometimes they just they just totally cut me loose. Like one time, they just it was during the summer, and they they said just do something. We don't care. Just you know, put some things about balloons, and we have this, and we have that. And so I uh, I did a whole dinosaur scene. I did a, a like a Velociraptor with an electric guitar and a. I did this stegosaurus. I changed it to balloonosaurus, and the, the the things on the, you know, the thing on his back, you know, the the stegosaurus instead of having stakes, it had balloons coming up like this, you know, out of its back. And then the stegosaurus was was like, blow, like holding its breath, trying to blow up these balloons. Just, I, I just, I love that. I love the freedom of, of doing that, of being able to just do whatever I feel like doing and it's so exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. It's yeah, that's that's where it. I want to be. <laughs> not not taking client work that <laughs> is unfulfilling. As, as long as the client lets you do whatever you want and argue with that. Yeah, I have people trained. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was watching one of your videos in, in uh, somebody, I think it might have been the Friends Bakery one, the recent video, and and someone's like, well, I want to do this, and, and I I don't, I don't know if this is what you intended or if, if I'm reading into it, but I, I, just, I feel like I caught you going, no, I think this will be better, and it was like a Jedi, <laughs> it was like a Jedi trick, and she goes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah, like, I, I appreciated that. <laughs> well, and I, I sort of, I've sort of built a reputation where, you know, I get people to think, you know, let me do what I want, and you, and you will get the best product, and I know what I'm right. doing, but then sometimes people, like, it's crazy. So there's so many different types of people. Like I was doing KFCs, which is, which is ironic because I'm vegan too, and I pay for KFC. <laughs> you can Hitler, right? Anyway, and so I work for KFC, and they're, I think I, I did 20 stores, and they're all like, oh, the window painter's here, great, okay, you know, and I paint the window, and they're all happy, but I got this one store where the guy was such a butt, and he was so weird, and he would, he would go against his own good, because my whole objective is to paint it off, paint all over, do everything, and he goes, we only want this window painted. You know, and then sometimes I'll have stickers. I, I have a digital printer and I'll print out stuff too, like logos and things or, you know, any way to promote their, their window painting, to add to it. If you have plans for the stickers, I'm going to put them up here and do this and do that. And so some people will, they're just, they're so headstrong. They don't know me. They, they're not used to me or my game or what I want to do. And I ended up, I end up like arguing with them. And so I'll end up doing what they want. It costs more and it looks like crap. Yeah. You know, or they'll tell, you know, but sometimes I'll just quit. I'll do, <laughs> I'll do the window, but I never go back. Yeah. Or if it's a chain store and I've got like, say 20, 
like if I'm doing Wendy's or something or somebody and there's 20 stores and one of them gives me some guff about this or that or they want to try and control me or make me do stuff that's stupid. I just I put them last on the list. You know, I do their store last. I I treat people the way they treat me. Like if they give me freedom and they I give them so much and I I wash their windows, I take it off. I if they want extra stuff, I'll do it for them. But but some people are just they're crazy. You know, they they go against their own good. Yeah, I was going to ask if it was a price thing, but you said that usually it costs them more to to do what's not best for them. So a lot of times we run into that where it's like, well, yeah, I don't want to do that because it's going to cost more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, when sometimes, you know, you get some clients and, you know, it, sometimes you have to factor in like a pain in the ass cost. Yeah. You know, to, to try it sometimes <laughs> to, to even try to get them to not hire you, you know. <laughs> what, what what do you call that when you when you build the client? What do you put it on? <laughs> what do you call the pain in the ass clause? <laughs> Service fee. Yeah. I I sometimes just don't go back. You know, I, I just like I'm just really emotional. Like if I if I don't like somebody or something or they talk down to me or you know, I I and then every on um, Rarely I do this, but sometimes I just go, I just kind of go nuts. Like if they keep, I mean, because there's, you know, what is it, three in 100 people are narcissists. You're going to run into narcissists and people that are, you know, controlling and they want to put you in your place and, you know, and you make a living doing that, you know, and like, you know, which I don't get too much anymore. When people see me paint, they don't usually ask me that. But in the beginning, they did like you make a living. Don't quit your day job, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but now it's like, if I run into people like that, I just don't go back, you know. And right. And, but I couldn't always afford to do that, you know. And it's nice. And but I feel like you know because I'm 61, so I feel like I'm. I've kind of paid my dues and, you know, I got grandkids and I've lived my life. I could collect social security next year. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to quit painting windows. I don't want to quit doing art. I don't want to quit anything, but I don't want to do the crap anymore. Yeah. Cause it's been 40 years. Right. And but, yeah. But sometimes I will, yeah, like I was starting to say, sometimes I will tell people, like they start giving me crap, and I will tell them, I've painted over 70,000 windows. This is what I do. I do it for a living. I've been on TV. I've been, you know, I've got a YouTube channel. I'm pretty much the guy that teaches window painting. I'm, I'm the guy. And it's like, you need to just trust me and get out of my face, you know, and yeah. And and sometimes they will and sometimes they'll get mad or whatever, but that is really rare. Yeah. It it's so weird that you know, people hire a professional because they're a professional, because they're good at what they do, and then and then they don't let them do it, you know. Yeah, that happens so much. You know, just they, they just especially like when I was doing kids' books, you know, they just want to thumbprint so much, you know, so that I don't know if they they can tell their kids or tell somebody else, well that was my idea. You know. <laughs> And, and, and it turns out to be crap, you know, like you're saying, you know, because they didn't let me do my job, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, don't you ever just kind of like when people start dictating things, doesn't it kind of mess with you as far as being creative? Or, I mean, with me, it does. I Yeah, oh, yeah. I just yeah. like, you know, when people start, like sometimes I just tell people, if you start talking to me and you start saying things and telling me about colors and this and that, if, you know, I don't like the yellow. I don't like yellows. I mean, I have people tell me that. I don't like the, I don't like the color yellow. It's like, it's so weird to me. And so I have to tell them, well, this is what I'm like. I'm very right brained. Now, the more you talk and the more you tell me things, I have to use my left, the left side of my brain, which is the language side, the analytical side. And the more I have to do that, the less you're going to get the creativity, the freedom, the spontaneity, the flair. Yeah. But again, 
I try to inoculate people. So nowadays it's really rare that I have to lecture people or, you know, I used to have to do it more, it seems like, but now I just, I don't. And I, I feel, I feel lucky that I, I don't have to. Yeah, that is awesome. I wonder if just because you're getting older now, it's harder to boss around some old guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of like, <laughs> I, I feel I sorry for me. <laughs> oh, no. This guy's crazy. Let him do what he wants. He's going to do gonna break something. <laughs> that might have came out wrong. I mean, I, cause like, like in construction, I had that. Like when I was a younger kid, nobody would listen to me. And then when I got older, it seemed like, yeah, people would listen to me before they listened to the younger guys. You know what I mean? I feel sorry for you. Well, in my case too, they would be afraid because because of my van. Because <laughs> I show up as a clown. <laughs> I, was doing, I was doing. I got. Oh, this is funny. This is like, uh, God, I don't know what year it was. Two thousand eight, maybe. And it was in August. It was typically a slow, slow time, and I had just turned down a big job. It was for a furniture store and I really, I really needed the work too. Cause it was August and I, I kind of slowed down that time of year. And this guy, the guy calls, you know, from the furniture store and he's like, yeah, we want uh, pic we want pictures of desks and tables and we want it all realistic and, you know, mm. additional. And I was so bummed out. I, t I had to tell him, no, I said, you know, it's just, it's not what I do. I, I'm a cartoonist. I'm an animator. And, it's kind of not my thing. And he's like, oh, okay. Anyway, and then I, I remember going to the uh, local market and I, to get something to eat for lunch. And then when I came out to the car, I checked my messages. And I had gotten a call from Blockbuster Video. And they go, this is like around the time they were closing. Like, uh, I guess, I don't know if Netflix, but Redbox was doing its thing. And it's really affecting the video stores. And so I... So I answered and they go, they go, yeah, we want to know if you and your team or your crew uh, can do 160 stores in 30 wow. days. <laughs> and so I thought about it and I thought, I'm just going to call them and lie to them. So I called back, <laughs> I go, I called back, I go, yeah, I can do it. So it just so happens their store, uh, their main store was on in Portland. And so they asked me to come down. And oh, and they go, and we're only going to pay you a hundred dollars a store, Jeez. and that has to cover your hotels or Jeez. travel, your gas, your oh, pay, wow. everything. That has to cover everything. And so I said okay. And so I went down, and it was just a couple windows, and all they wanted was kids' rentals, ninety-nine cents. So. So I, I went down to their store and I painted it. The first time, I think it took me an hour and a half to paint it. And because uh, I was just doing the very first one. But uh, so I painted this kid's head on the window. It was just this, this big kid's head, no body. And I'm really fast at doing just, you know, just doing the head. You know, I can do it really quickly. But anyway, so I painted this kid, you know, and with crazy hair and, and then right next to it, big letters, kids rentals, 99 cents. And so I did this on the window and they're like, okay, we're good to go. So they gave me a list of all their stores and they were all over Oregon and Washington. I mean, everywhere. And, uh, so, and this is when I, this is when I was the clown too. So I'd be like just <laughs> driving around dresses and they would tell people too, Oh, the, the managers, they'd be like, Oh yeah, this clown guy is going to come. He's going to paint your window. Just let him paint the window. <laughs> but so I had to do this in 30 days, but I ended up painting 160 stores in two and a half weeks. Wow. wow. And that included travel time. I was doing about 10 stores a day. So I was doing a thousand dollars a day and, uh, I ended up making sixteen thousand dollars, and uh, I think my overhead was eighteen hundred or something. So I ended up making like fourteen thousand two hundred dollars profit. <laughs> Not too shabby. Um, but it was <laughs> that was 
that was a fun, fun time. I mean, I went up, I was five miles from the Canadian border, in the Eastern Washington. And then they sent me to uh, Utah. They said, we got stores there. So I did 39 stores in four days, including travel from Portland to Utah, 39 stores, and then back. And uh, still with the van, you know, driving around, going crazy. And it was fun. And so I, and then I did the same thing for uh, Hollywood video, ran around. and But that's, that's the best money and the best, you know, when you get those chains and, uh, and it's fun and it's fast. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, like, just hearing those numbers, I was like, oh, man, sounds impossible, but you made, like, some really good money there. That's, that's really cool. I guess, like, when you think about it, there's probably, like, a lot of, you know, like, several blockbusters in one town. So, like, once you hit in one area, you probably had a few stores to do, huh? Yeah, like, in P Portland, mostly, there's probably, I'm guessing, maybe there might have been 15 blockbusters or more and, and yeah. then, you know i had to go all over down south to medford and eugene and all points in between and the coast and but uh i had to go to eastern washington i went to i think it's called the tri-cities area in sort of southeast washington uh -huh. and, and uh they had a few stores there, and then I drove to Wenatchee or something, and then I had to go to Yakima, and then I had to drive up to some town. I don't know where it was. It was kind of in, it was, it was northeastern Washington. But then the next store I drove to was four hours away. I had to drove drive over the Stevens Pass, and I drove. <laughs> it was great. So I just drove for four <laughs> hours to get to the store that was like. I think that was the one that was like five miles from the Canadian border. Yeah. And then when I came down into uh, Seattle, there was that whole area. There was like 80 stores, I think, like all, you know, parts of Seattle and all the cities around Seattle. It's wild. So when you were talking about animation, just out of curiosity, you were saying that you had some stuff in like, you know, those, those animation festivals, the Sick and Twisted animation festivals. And I remember those. Um, I used to really dig them. I mean, uh, what did you do? I don't know. Like, is it? Well, the Backyard Barbecue, the Backyard Barbecue one, I think, was in Sick and Twisted. But I didn't do the animation, but I was in the film. Oh, I see. I was the I person see. being animated. And it had my art car in it. And then I was in a film. It had to do with the first Iraq war. It was like an anti-war. And it was really cool. It was full-blown uh, cell animation where I had actually, you know, I had actually inked the cells and back painted them like old school. And it was, yeah. a, it was a cycle of a guy. It was a, it was a collaborative uh, film of, uh, that was anti-war. And you know, I wasn't at the time. I wasn't totally anti-war, but I was, I was against the idea of how they glamorize war. So yeah. I could at least stand on that and say, you know, it's not glamorous. And uh, so I did an army man marching. I had had a, I had had a grasshopper I was working on that was walking, and it was like, I was doing like one frame a second, so twenty-four frames per second, just you know, like full-blown Disney animation. Yeah, but it was a cycle, and I had an old, I had a Bolex 16 millimeter camera, and I built this animation stand out of pipe. Anyway, I, um, and this was, this was like maybe 19, 1989, maybe. Yeah. So it was quite a few years ago. Anyway, uh, I took this, this pen, these pencil tests or pencil drawings of a, of the of this uh, grasshopper character walking and I turned it into an army man. <clears throat> so it's just a goofy army man. And it's, it's basically like a 22nd, you know, little video as it was a collaborative effort of a bunch of animators who had all pitched in to make this film. Yeah. And so the army man's marching and then in the background you see it, you know, he's marching along, he's all happy. It's like a really, 
almost a Tex Avery cartoon looking marching guy. And in the background, you see a missile take off in the distance on the horizon. And the missile hits him, and then the smoke, you know, it cycles. And then at the end, it's just this guy, and he's all blown up, and there's blood everywhere. And it's this cute cartoon, but now he's all bloody, and there's bones sticking out. And then the sign flashes on the screen. It says, war is not glamorous. <laughs> and that was the whole message. And uh, it was part of a film. I don't even know where it is now, some type of festival. I did another one for... And I can't, I don't know why MTV didn't like it, but they had a contest. And so I did it. I did the same type of animation, cell animation, hand drawn, hand painted cells, back painted with cell vinyl paint. And it was, a, it was really cool. It was a rabbit. And this rabbit, well, it was a guy in a rabbit costume, kind of a half shaven guy. And he's like, he's looking at the camera and he's like, hey, kids, don't forget to watch MTV. Or I'll get ya. And when he says get ya, his face just flashes and he turns kind of like into the the rabbit in that Twilight Zone film, that original one of the big rabbit that comes up, the kid who could control reality, and he made this big wicked rabbit, or almost like the darn Donnie Darko rabbit. And so yeah. it comes up and he's you know, and it was really cool. And it had MTV logos and I submitted it to him. It was like 14 seconds long. It took me like four months to make. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was like a contest or something, but never heard back from them. They were just like, well, it's weird. <laughs> you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. But I haven't done I haven't done really a lot, but I have I have the ability to do it, you know, and I yeah. and I did finally get an animation disc and and I think at some point in my life I probably will do it. Just do some uh, do some animation for, you know, festivals. I wouldn't do it commercially. I couldn't, I don't think I could do it commercially. Yeah. Have you ever done any like stop motion animation with your like little sculptures there and all that kind of stuff? I have, but nothing really extensive, you know, like just, yeah. just again, just like stuff for fun. I mean, it really fascinates me all that stuff, but again, I just, right now bang for my, you know, the most bang for my buck is painting windows. I'm like a rock star. People see me painting. Yeah. It's all, it's like, it's all instantaneous. I show up and all right. of a sudden there's elves and reindeers on their window and people are, <coughs> and kids are like going, Oh my God, you know? And it's like, yeah. it's so fun and exciting, but I think it's yeah, the animation takes longer and it's like more delayed and response and all that kind of stuff. Totally get that. Yeah, I, I do, I think for fine art, I just, I sculpt, you know, that's yeah. what I do for that. And I can sculpt for hours and really, like how you guys, you know, you work like how you work for hours and, 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 you know, you have that mindset. That's how I am, but with sculpting, I go yeah. into, that, I go into that place where you, you know, you kind of lose track of time and you're just sitting there and. It just evolves. Yeah. So how often do you do these uh, art casts? Every week. Wow. Yeah. So you guys just switch off. Yeah. Yeah, we switch yeah. between our channels and yeah. I mean, not everybody's here all the time, but you know, there's enough of us that the show goes on every week. That's really cool. Yeah, this is our 75th episode, so. Wow. We haven't, yeah, I was about to say that, too. <laughs> I, think, I think Jeff's the only one that's made every single one of them. Yeah. He hasn't missed an episode. <laughs> I didn't realize you missed one, though, Scott. I, I did. I had a concert I went to, I think, once. And, oh. Yeah. But. I'm the king of the hill. you got to knock me down to get on top of that. <laughs> Uh, it's it's pretty fun. So I mean, it's just good. Like we don't always have guests, but it's it, it, it's a lot easier to do these. I think when you have a guest because there's always a new topic, and we didn't expect to have a naked dancing clown on. I mean, I just thought we were <laughs> book, I thought we were booking the window cleaners. Hey, I can do it right now. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
never be on again. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to ask you, because I saw something on uh, on your channel, Scott, about um, Will Terrell. Is that his name? Well, yeah, that's a uh, Will Terrell. That's a that's a friend of uh, of Kevin's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was Kevin's channel, I think. I don't know Will. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was on Kevin's channel too, and that yeah, that guy's incredible. Yeah. I love his sketchbooks and like I mean he is so amazing. Yeah, he's a fantastic cartoonist. That's an illustrator and yeah. And he's yeah, a good dude. <laughs> it's funny because that was one of the things because I watch there's a few like vlogs that uh Kevin and I watch that aren't really they're not really artists, but they just do these daily vlogs and stuff. And when I saw your channel, it was kind of it reminded me of a few different things from different people I liked and it, part of it was that vlog element part of it was because you're obviously teaching art and then you had that sort of infectious laughter like like Will Terrell has so I was like wow this is this has got all this is just like everything <laughs> rolled into one <laughs> yeah I in the beginning I didn't really show uh, the customers but I think people like that when it shows me talking to the talking to people yeah, and I was going to ask you about that because I know Kevin and I, because we do vlog videos from time to time, and we kind of struggle with, you know, going out with the camera and the, you know, out in the real world and filming and, and stuff, and and getting over that kind of, you know, embarrassment of doing that. And I noticed, I, I don't know if it makes it, and obviously you don't have that issue because of the the whole performance thing with the clown, you know, persona and everything, but. I'm what I noticed that a lot of times you do it with the, the, the GoPro and it's just like, it's part of you and you, and I don't know, it's like people expect it. Like they don't even, I wonder if they even know that they're being filmed, you know, because no. like if you're, if you're there holding a camera, it's a little different than if you've got one on and you're painting and for all they know is you're doing a documentary or whatever. So I was curious about that. If you, you know, most people don't know they're being filmed. Yeah. And that's why it's so candid because I have a couple, I have it where I strap it to my chest, but I wear it on a, uh, I wear it on a helmet. It's like a bike helmet. Yeah. But I turned off the red light that flashes. So you can't tell it's on. And so they know, I think sometimes people know, cause I, I make videos that I make videos. And so I think some people know, and sometimes I tell them or whatever, but most people don't know because I'll go to a brand new store I've never been to and walk in with it and I'll start taping them. And they, it doesn't seem like they know. And in the beginning when I did it, it made me nervous. You know, I felt kind of, you know, intrusive and, and, and it just felt weird, but I've made, yeah. I have like, I mean, now I have like almost 800 videos. So wow. it's like, it's like anything after a while I get used to it and and uh, I kind of have a routine now that you know I get in my car and I'm like hey everybody how's it going it's you know February 22nd and I give the date and I see you in a few minutes and then I show up and I think people like it they get they it makes them feel comfortable because they the same sort of format but um Sometimes I change it up. Sometimes I get more wild or I'll dance or sing a little bit. And then it's funny because people are like, God, you're so weird. And I want to tell them, you don't know, you don't know what weird is. Because <laughs> like, they don't, they don't know Extremo. They don't know. I mean, some of them do, but a lot of people that come to the channel. And then I made an ebook because like I have almost 800 videos and i've talked about pretty much everything to do with window painting and so people will come to the channel and they'll um they'll say i'm just starting can you tell me what kind of paint you use and um can you you know they they want me to tell them right then and so i used to do that so i made a little ebook that i sell for 12 bucks and that's really helped you know i just tell them I just tell them here buy my ebook. Yeah, because I mean, you start off with that and you tell people what you use, and then after you've done that a, 
about a hundred times, 200 times, 500 times, a thousand times. It's kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to put a link of link of all my tools that I use in my description of my YouTube channel. So you could just go to that or even better yet. Like you said, the, you know, put together an ebook. Yeah. But the book's done. Okay. I just, all I do is sell it on my channel. I sell it through PayPal. They take out like 65 cents. I keep $11 and 35 cents and, and then I just send them a PDF in their email and I've sold about 60 of them. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I'm really happy. And it's saved me time from having to explain to people, you know, tell them, yeah, I use an interior eggshell finish and these are the colors and blah, blah, blah. And I use black cell vinyl paint. And so this way they, or they can just, you know, they can go through my videos and watch them. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, that's the thing. I mean, they could probably pick it up if they watch all your videos, but if they want it quick, you know, and digestible, they just get the book. I mean, that's, that's a, you know, business model that a lot of people use that teach on YouTube and everything. And yeah, it it's, it's, hard, it's hard to get the information. If you want specific information to go through all the videos, it's, it's a lot of work. But I repeat a lot of things over and over and over. Like I've told people what kind of paint I use, like over and over and over, and what colors and what kind of brushes. And yeah, but I don't think you have to worry about that because every you know, every video is somebody's first video. So you know, every where one person might have heard it a couple times, and I think or a few times, there's already somebody new. So right, exactly. But I, I feel like I'm doing good. It's slow, you know. It's not. It's, it's, it's exciting, and I make a little bit of money. I don't make a lot. I make about like right now during the year, I only make about thirty dollars a month, which is pretty much nothing. But during the holidays, it goes up to about a hundred bucks a month. So it's exciting. Just you know, because before I was making nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's not like it's a big, huge channel. But more than anything, it's fun. I mean, there's so yeah. many, I have so many loyal subscribers and, and really fun people. And I do uh, subscriber art videos where people will send me their art. Someone is from Australia or the Netherlands or Belgium or, you know, somewhere, you know, like Sao Paulo, Brazil or something, or people send me stuff. And then I, I make videos of their stuff. And like, I got a guy named Steve Field from, uh, recently from Kent. He lives in uh, Hern Bay, Kent, England. And uh, he's just starting window painting, but he's a really good sign writer. He does chalkboard stuff. And, uh, you know, I just, it's, it's fun to do stuff for him. Yeah, I think it's really cool that you do that. And it's like, you know, just teaching it and showing people your techniques and stuff, because, you know, some people might look at that as competition, but for one, I mean, you're so well established and you're so quick. I mean, and you, it's the ideas and everything that you could teach somebody every, everything, you know, and they're still not going to be able to do what you do, you know, but I think it's cool that you kind of showcase what other people are doing and everything. Yeah. You, sure. you have to get your time in, you know, and they'd have to catch up, you know, to, and there are local people that kind of, you know, compete with me and stuff, but I don't really care anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, only, you know, you're the only one that can do you. So. Right. Did you really think that? Get you any, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, do, do you notice that your videos get you like more work at all? When you like uh, stores find you online or. Not really. I think, I think most of my work comes from people will just Google my, they'll Google, uh, like people that don't know me or they'll just Google, uh, Portland window painting or painter. And then my name always comes up. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I was going to say your line of work. I mean, I, it's gotta be, cause when I, I briefly did murals for a while and, uh, it's the the referral is the main thing, especially like window paintings, even at a different level than murals, because when 
when somebody wants a mural painted, what do they do? They want to show it off, and then oh, who did that mural? And but but when it's right out there in the public, I mean, people see it all the time. So not only are you you're painting something to advertise that company, you're painting to advertise yourself. And if you're all over the place, then there's got to be you know the referral type thing has to kind of snowball. I would imagine. Yeah, it's really exponential, and I don't I don't advertise anywhere. Hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I made some stickers that I stick on the window now sometimes, but some a lot of times I forget. But yeah, it's just word of mouth because my windows are different. They're not, you know, a lot of people that do windows. A lot of it, it's kind of like just designs almost, or or they they might do some illustration or animation, but it's just not as. I guess intense as mine or bold or colorful or whatever. So sometimes people will be shocked. They'll they'll come to Portland or they'll see this window and they'll be like, wow. I mean, it looks like Warner Brothers or, you know, Hanna Barbera or something like on a window. And so, you know, it's like they want that. But some people can't tell. They'll hire anybody and they don't care. But but yeah, so the the work speaks for itself. You know, people want that and they'll they'll go inside and ask and you know so that's where I get most of my work it's just word of mouth people see it and <clears throat> you know or some of it is online people will Google looking for a window painter but it is interesting I'll I always know like most of the people that I talk to they know me already they they heard about me or and it's really funny because they they talk up to me which is really weird <laughs> like I could, I might not even be that busy, and they'll be like, "Oh, oh man, I'm so glad I got a hold of you. I know you're so busy, and I know you like to do your thing, and you know I, I want you to just do your thing. But this is kind of what I want, and I hope that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mind that because no, <laughs> in the beginning it was like the opposite. Yeah, this is what we want, and, or like. Last week, I turned down about three jobs just because of their attitude on the phone. Because I can tell, I've talked to tens of thousands of people. You, after a while, you, you become more savvy when it comes to people. And so, I get a call from somebody, and they're like, you know, it's a finance company, and and they're like, you know, this is what we want, and we need you to do some sketches of of this based on our idea and uh, I'm going to send you an email with the pictures of the building and the size of the windows and, <laughs> and then we'll decide if we choose you because we, <laughs> we're having several bids. I'm just laughing because I've seen your videos and I know how you work and I can see that's like totally contrary to how you work. And so I just like and 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 they go and there's certain things I don't like to paint. I mean, I can paint them, but again, I'm not an illustrator. And so they're like, "I want. We want a guy. We want to. We want to promote personal loans. So we want a guy. We want him thinking about. We want a motorcycle and a yacht and a family, like by a campfire and guys playing a guitar, you know, on the beach, for personal loans. And he's thinking about this and thinking about that. And, and uh, I think I." <laughs> I think I just told them I don't do motorcycles. <laughs> 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 like, they're like, what do you mean? I go, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm not very good at them. I go, you should call a sign shop or something, or, or maybe, yeah, because you, you're going to get lots of bids, so you'll have lots of people to choose from. So, and so sometimes I'll get people like that that are really instructional, and they don't know me, so it's weird to them. Yeah, you know. And then what's really weird too is when you when you tell people and you 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 start talking you talk them out of wanting to use you. Yeah. And they want you more. Yeah, so, oh yeah. This guy didn't do that though. He was just like, what a weirdo. Basically <laughs> crazy. You know. But then if they're negative and they're arrogant, then I just go, I'm Scott Campbell. <laughs> like I'm Donald yeah. Trump. <laughs> Don't you know who I am? Don't you watch the news? <laughs> if they're really arrogant and they're assholes, I just I turn it around. 
That's cool. And then I just go, you will never ever find someone like me. <laughs> You'll never ever find a guy that's painted 70,000 windows, can paint anything on the spot, have it totally perfect and clean. Plus I wash <laughs> off the window and I might cheap, my prices are really affordable. And it's like, it's beautiful Disney style animated stuff on your windows, creative and fun. It's going to bring business, you know, business in. But, you know, I try to avoid that. You know, I try to, I only do that if they're really arrogant or they talk down to me. But most people are great. I mean, you've seen my videos. People are like, yeah. they're cool. They're like, oh, yeah, well, let's do this. Okay. And, okay, yeah, well, that might not work. How about we do this? Okay. You know, like we did, I did the Friends Bakery one with the, the girl playing softball. You know, she, that was her idea. She said, oh, maybe, you know, do a softball theme. I'm like, oh, okay. That's a cool idea. You know, something, you know, it's something kind of cool. And, and, uh, or I did that taco place. The guy said he wanted a big taco on the window. So I had a guy eating a taco. There's nothing wrong with that. It's like I don't shoot down everybody's ideas about what they have. But then sometimes they have it all planned out. And they want a picture of this and a picture of that. And it's like I can usually change people's minds and explain to them, you have to get their attention. you got to get them to look. It would be better off if you painted a big dragon on your window or Godzilla or King Kong or a giant <laughs> insect or some aliens. It doesn't matter. Paint some aliens saying we have the best prices in the universe or a giant bug. Don't Are you bugged by high prices? You know, be corny, be big, be bold. And so people will, will do that. But, um, but then sometimes people like, uh, like I'm working for, I've been working for Burgerville for a while and all of a sudden they, they started slowing down They stopped painting their windows because somebody management changes or something, but I'm in a good position because I only did maybe a dozen of their stores. So they get replaced by Safeway or they get replaced by some big RV place or a car dealer or whatever. So I'm in a good position because I don't have any one client that, you know, is like an overlord that I have to do. You know, to if I lose them, I'm gonna die or something. So yeah, that's a good way to do business. Do you usually have just a, like a constant waiting list and everything? I kind of, I kind of do, but it ebbs and flows. Like right now, I'm starting to get caught up. I have, I have about two jobs right now, and so once I do them, like I have a, I have a job in McMinnville for a place called Air Gas. And then I have uh, Beaverton Hyundai. It's a, Beaverton's a suburb, well, not suburb of Portland. It's over the hill, but it's a city near here. And uh, and uh, so I got to do them. So right now, that's all I got is the two. So I'll be caught up. But usually by the time I get caught up, there's more. But, bef but right now, I have, I don't know, I think I have... I probably have like 2,500 bucks owed to me because I, I, I didn't used to bill people as much, but then I started doing that more, which makes it easier for people. And so I did a lot of safe ways and that really kind of put me behind, but now I'm getting caught up and, but, uh, I don't know. I have a, it's, it's really balanced, you know, but then around September each year I do, um, I do start getting really busy because of Halloween and Thanksgiving, you know, and definitely Christmas. I mean, at Christmas, yeah. it just like explodes and I can't do them all. Yeah. The hollow, the Halloween thing, that's, that would be my favorite time. I watched some of your, the Halloween stuff you were doing and I was like, oh man, that looks awesome. And you were doing, you did one, I think. I think maybe it was showing you were showing an old mural, but were you using the UV paint? And you were doing airbrushing and everything. Oh yeah, that was for. Uh, that was actually for. Uh, uh, it was like a haunt convention, or something. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of I kind of do the same thing with like the holidays for my day job because I design like you know rubber stamps and things. And, uh, but we work so far in advance. It's like right now I'm, you know, doing like Christmas stuff. And so. Those are so <laughs> cool. I went to your, uh, your YouTube channel, but those are really awesome. So is that like, you just like, 
you just keep making new ones? They keep making them and selling them or? Yeah, it's kind of, it's like a multi-level marketing company. So they, they have catalogs. I mean, we do some retail, um, but they have catalogs and, you know, people will host parties like they do with, would do with like Tupperware or whatever. And, but they, it's craft supplies and things, but our core, our core business is, uh, is stamps. Um, so I, you know, I do a lot of the, you know, the stamp design. So, you know, I'll, I'll be designing like, you know, for Halloween, I'll do mummies and vampires and ghosts and all that stuff. And then I'll do Christmas stuff and, you know, I'll do little animal creatures and it's always something different. So it's kind of the same as what I do. Like yeah. Seasonal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very, yeah, very seasonal, but the only difference is you're, you're working on it so far in advance, you know? <laughs> Right, right. What uh, what's like the worst job you ever got? What 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 did you ever have to draw that you were just like, oh, I can't stand that? Oh, like when I did it, like yeah, sure, it, like like it was done poorly. You mean? Well, no, just something you absolutely hate to paint. You could have done it well, but. It's like, no, I don't, I don't like that. I hate to paint motorcycles, machines, <laughs> anything that's geometrical that has to be symmetrical, like cars. Mm. I mean, if it's like a, you know, like that taxi cab and Roger Rabbit, that's fun. <laughs> I have to yeah. like a, you know, 1970 Camaro or something. You know, it's, it's painful. It's actually painful. Like I could have a panic attack. <laughs> Because yeah. it's like, it really just, because I'm not good at it. Yeah. You know, it's like, it'd be like, it'd be like talking to some guy that does, uh, you know, technical illustrations of insects, you know, really precise, beautiful, airbrushed, you know, drawings and paintings. And you told him, do a window splash. It'd be yeah. the same thing to them. It would probably be, you know, really uncomfortable. And so anytime I have to do something like that, and I try to avoid that now, I try to avoid anything like that. But, uh, and I don't like painting the same thing twice. It's mm. Like a, like anything that's, you know, like they want a picture of a, a shape or a design or, something and it has to be painted twice you know or if like they wanted the same thing painted in two different windows it's like i don't know why it just freaks me out i, I don't like doing the same thing twice i don't like you know i like i like everything to be free probably the worst job i had and i almost started crying yeah. But it wasn't because I didn't like the window. It was just, it was very physically painful. Is I was painting a window and it was, uh, I think it was about, maybe it was only like 30 degrees out, but the wind was blowing 40 miles an hour. So it was in the single digits with the wind chill. Yeah. And so I was painting it and I was trying to finish and I just remember my paint freezing and I was, I was just, I, I was trying to get done. And then the, the wind came up and blew a bunch of dirt into my face and I had dirt in my mouth and, you know, crunchy rocks in my mouth. And I just wanted to cry. I just wanted to get done. And, and my fingers were like frostbitten and I just, yeah. it was so painful. So that is the draw. That is the, the drawback of being a window painter is, I have been in really harsh weather before and sometimes I just laugh, you know, I just like laugh it off or. I did notice that when I was watching your videos, man, it's like you, you go out there no matter what, you know, it's like, you know, I used to paint houses and, you know, you don't do that, you know, when it's freezing or snowing or something, but man, you go, you go right in there and you go to town, I guess, you know, your paint job doesn't have to like, you know, last forever or whatever. So it's just like, just get it up. But, uh, it was pretty interesting seeing some of your like you know, I don't know, uh, strategies or stuff. They're like staying hot, warm and like sticking your hands down that bucket and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of crazy. It is I, uh, crazy. 
I did this. I did this one video of, or oh, it's, it was so funny because it was just so ridiculous. I was painting a Burgerville restaurant, and this was in Canby, Oregon, and it was raining, and and it was windy, and I remember, I remember getting on the ladder and the wind blowing me off the ladder and my paint going flying and and i was videotaping it too i think i had the gopro on and i was videotaping it and the the camera was you couldn't even see because the camera was covered with water and i was laughing my ass off and like going and just you know <laughs> flying everywhere and it's cold and rainy and and then i think i got in the car and sat there and was just laughing and because sometimes yeah it's ridiculous it's like I know I'll be a window painter. I'll go to Portland, Oregon, where it rains all the time, and I'll paint windows for a living. That's a good idea. It's like, and people in Florida complain or LA, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's funny. It really is. It's, so did what you about like your best? Or I'm sorry. I was going to follow it up with what's your, what's your best, you know, you ever you got like a one that stands out in your mind. That's like your favorite one you've ever done. Um, I think, I think some of the best windows I've ever done, Lippman's or the Lippman company, the party supply store, I have done, I've done a lot of really, really good windows there. And, uh, but the other store I used to do, and I, I haven't done them anymore. They stopped, they stopped painting their window for some reason, but there was a pawn shop here in Portland on 82nd Avenue. And it was called Stuff. And on the window, the only thing that we that would have written is, you know, we pay cash for stuff or all, always buying, we pay cash. Yeah. And so I would go in and they go, and it was 250 bucks and then include, included cleaning. And so I would go in and they just go, do whatever. <laughs> they didn't even tell me anything. They didn't tell me what they wanted. And because they did that, I would do like the most wild, crazy, you know, illustrative kind of like, you know, comic book looking stuff. A lot of, a lot of detail, a lot of characters. Um, yeah. But uh, like I've done robots, like all kinds of really weird robots. But one of, one of the best windows, one of the coolest windows I thought I've done there was I had, it was during the winter and I had done uh, an army of penguins, like <laughs> army helmets on and everything, and they were battling a Yeti. Yeah. And so the Yeti was squeezing one of the penguins, like holding him in his arms <laughs> and screaming at the other ones. And, you know, this really pissed off abominable snowman character and the and it was like a comic strip i always I always approach their window like a comic strip there's word balloons and they're talking and the you know the penguins are like attack mm -hmm. <laughs> and, they have a, and, the, and this one guy's like we're gonna turn that yeti to spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> and just you know corny you know corny word balloons like that and they've got a machine gun shooting snowballs at it, you know, yeah. just, and so they would give me the like total, total freedom to just like, you know, do whatever, whatever I felt like doing. And th those are the windows that turn out the best. And, and uh, I don't know, I've done, I don't know. I've been doing more and more windows like that lately. They're yeah. so fun. I was watching one of the Halloween ones where you're saying, you know, sometimes, you know, because obviously, I mean, speed is the key to making money, but you're saying sometimes it's just so much fun that you just put a little extra work into it, you know? Oh, yeah, that was the that was when I was doing that tree on the for the I forget that place. It was for the uh, the Halloween convention place. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember talking about that. And, and then I, in the beginning, I used to make my videos like in three minutes because people are like, oh, don't make your videos too long. And I started yeah. making them longer and longer. And people are like, oh, we like the long ones. And then I think I have one that's 37 minutes long. 
which is crazy for YouTube. It's almost like a, it's like a half hour show. It's like a film. Yeah. And we, we do that a lot too. Cause I mean, a lot of the people that watch our videos are artists themselves. So they're drawing, you know, and creating while they're, you know, they kind of just have it on the background. So it's not, you know, then you get some people like, you know, I try to do a little mix, like some shorter videos, but a lot of them usually, except for now, because I'm doing like daily vlogs, which if I did them like hour, an hour long, it would just take forever to edit. <laughs> hey, you know what? I've got to go sharpen some pencils. It's going to take me about a minute. Okay. Okay. But all my, I like drawing with these Prismacolors, but I'll be right back. All right. Is Kevin still there? I noticed his picture came up. But... Oh. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Yeah. Have you been Have you been drawing? Not drawing this whole time. I haven't really looked up. I guess so. Uh, for some reason, my uh, screen sharing it won't pick up my second monitor. So. Huh. So yeah, I don't know. I've been having this <laughs> this problem lately. So. Yeah, yeah that's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were having like before with Scott had was having some technical difficulties. We kept we could either only get his camera to work or his or his. Uh, yeah, it dropped it dropped me off there too for a little bit. Yeah, for a few minutes. Well, and YouTube's doing some funny stuff. I guess they said I saw something. It was I got an alert saying Google Effects will expire after April something. I don't even know what that is. Do you know what that is? Google yeah, Effects. I but I I don't know if you guys. Noticed, but it looked like looked like the just uh, YouTube has kind of changed its layout a little bit. Like just today, I noticed. It. Yeah. But um, hey, I'm probably gonna have to get going here pretty soon because I have a cold. Okay. And uh, I'm fading. All right. But yeah, I think that Google Effects is like you know when you have like the. The face that follows your face, or whatever. So you have like a clown face or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Like with the hats and stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. That Snapchat thing. Yeah. It sucks to have colds. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it really affects my business. I, the beginning of the year, I, I'm usually really healthy and no problems hardly ever. I had a cold for like, and I still have it a little. I've had it for like six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, there's some going around Portland. It's like almost everybody I know has had something or getting something. Yeah, so. it's, it's really crazy. I think, yeah, because Jeff had that cold too. I think I'm the only one that so far hasn't got it, probably because it's not, not that cold out here. But It's not transferable via YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I should probably go because... I mean, it's close to a couple hours or so, and I gotta, I gotta hit it. But well, it's nice to nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Hopefully, I'll see you around town. I'll stop and say hi. Alrighty. All right. <laughs> all right. Sorry, I'm bailing out early, but that's all right. I'll talk. I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, okay, it's not too early. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. See you, everybody. Later, Kevin. So do you? Uh, you said you did that ebook. Um, do you sell anything else of your work to kind of make some extra money on the side, being a YouTube artist? Or no, I don't. Kind of I don't. But I'm gonna. I'm wanting to get my wife's gonna help me build a website, and because I want to sell the book through the website, and uh, I would like to sell sketches too, you know, and, and just drawings, like, and you know, and yeah, sell them, you know. It's like I'm doing this sketch right now of a duck. I have people that subscribe to my channel that would love to have an original, and and you know, yeah. I could sell it for you know ten, fifteen bucks, or whatever, yeah. you know, or make it affordable for my people that follow me. And uh, so I want to do that. The other idea I had too was because I have a digital printer. I started a company called Car Tats in 2008, and it never took off. But basically, it was uh, personal magnetic stuff for cars, like skulls, flaming skulls, flowers, you know, big lips, eyeballs, whatever that people could put on their cars.
but it yeah. never it never really took hold. So, but we kept the printer. So I have this like twenty four thousand dollar digital printer, eight foot wide, Roland SP five forty V. I can make banners. I can print whatever stickers, full color. You wow. know, even cuts them out, like die cuts them. So, I was thinking of offering uh, printing stickers for window painters or people that want. Uh, they could put stickers on windows. Yeah. But then I thought, oh, they could probably order those anywhere. I don't know, but it was just an idea, or, or maybe sell even sell T-shirts. You know, anything to do with window painting or. Sure. Stuff like that. that. Especially with your YouTube channel, you probably got some fans that probably would be into T-shirts for sure. Yeah, like you know, it's just different things. You could say, you know, come up with funny ideas or you know, yeah. about being a window painter or you know, whatever, for the pain of it all or something, you know, or we're into pain, window painters, we're into pain, P-A-N-E, you know, it's just, I don't know, just something. But uh, so I thought of doing that too. But what I realized about sales, because I've tried Etsy and I've tried different things, is really the most important thing is having a following. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you don't have a following, you could come up with the coolest looking thing and coolest ideas and cool little sculptures, castings you're going to sell. But there's so much available for people to choose from. So without without me having a following, it's just it's almost like an uphill battle. You, you know, you really it's like having a following. I could sell this sketch of this duck. But if yeah. I, but if nobody knew who I was, they wouldn't care. It wouldn't mean anything to them. And so now, now through YouTube, now that I'm starting to get known more, I, uh, I'd like to do that. Like, I'd like to do another book too, because there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of things that I'm an expert at. Like, I'm definitely not an expert illustrator. I'm definitely not an expert sign painter. I am an expert window painter. I mean, I could definitely say that, that that's something I am an expert at, that I know about and I can sell that. But other than that, I couldn't think of anything. Like as far as sculpting, I'm not the best sculptor in the world. You know, I'm on a scale from one to a hundred, I'd probably like 30, you know, as far as if you took all the sculptors in the world, you know, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not horrible, but I'm not even, middle of the road compared to some i mean some of these guys that sculpt toys you know yeah. oh my god they're just like they're these superheroes with all these details and you know and just amazing people just amazing or like jordu shell i don't know if you know who he is or the shiflet brothers oh, yeah. shiflet brothers oh my god these guys are like just you know it's what's that guy's name jason lee or something like that or i don't know they're just they're so great but i did think of something that i am good at and i do there are murals that i paint i do paint um uh, what's called chroma depth and i don't know if you're familiar with that but it's when the spectrum is split up depth wise in other words, I paint the black with blue on it, and then I paint green over the blue, and I paint yellow over the green and the blue, and I paint orange over the yellow and the green and the blue. Is everything stacked? And haunted. I do it for haunted houses and like uh, like amusement parks and stuff. But that is something I will do. I I've worked in Vegas and Seattle, where I, where I will travel, and I will go paint uh, these chroma depth murals in black light. You know, they're like mazes. It's, yeah. a, it's like the dark ride stuff. Exactly. It's a dark yeah. ride thing. But a lot of people that do that, they kind of don't really follow the the formula. You know, they, they kind of just splatter paint all over. There is one guy named Stuart from, he, he calls it Stuartism, and he does these sort of big airbrush monsters. And uh, he's uh, he's really good. He's really famous, and he does great stuff. But even his stuff, it, it's different than mine. Mine is like really, uh, it's more flat. And then I then I, I outline them with the black. 
heavy like on the windows but but i think for the style of chroma depth i do i do have some expertise in it and people will hire me to do it and uh so i would like to do an ebook on that or even a actually a video like sell a, yeah. sell a video about it so that might be my next one but and as far as window painting i could definitely do more uh window painting video or window painting books because I, uh, you know, this first one is super basic. Yeah. It's for it. What is, what it's for is like someone who's never, ever painted before someone who's not even an artist. And it tells them basically where you can buy eight ounce jars of house paint for like a few bucks and what colors to buy and buy these brushes. And then it shows them step by step. Like I do a, I do a splash on my, my, uh, my sliding glass door of my house that shows them they could do it on their sliding glass door. Like this is the design. This is what you do. Okay. Do this, do this step, everything. I mean, it's really super basic. I could probably, I could probably do more, you know, like more uh, books and stuff. But yeah, I would even think like a video series too. One, you know, because you do teach it, you do teach it on videos on YouTube. But it's not, you kind of have to hunt, and it's not like, it's not like step by step. Do this first, then do this, and so I could, I could see a video series too working for you. Yeah, I think, I think that would be good. But I do have some that are step by step on my, you know, on my channel but they're just so you know i try to list them there's there, there's the ones that are called tutorials yeah but i mean they some are tutorials that aren't listed as tutorials because i'll say oh this is what i do this is how i do this or this is how i mix up the color for pizza sauce you know or something so it's kind of they're kind of mixed up all together yeah, but if, I was, you know, if you had all that in one place that somebody could easily just, you yeah, know. I could probably go through my videos and just edit them. You could, yeah. Like go through yeah. and just pick out things and make a two-hour video and sell it for, you know, twenty nine ninety five or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I get really mentally lazy with that stuff. I it becomes boring and like to do the book was really. It was hard. Yeah. I mean, it's not a very big book. It's only like 30 pages, but the information of it is really, inside of it is really, I think it's really valuable for people. So it's not that it's long, but it did take a while to do all, because there's a lot of photographs in it. Yeah. So it's kind of like, what do I want to do? Make books and make money or do what I rather paint windows? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's... Uh, writing a book is it's a lot of work and that's why like i i remember once they i think they had like these i don't know mind reader type guys and they were talking about how they you know because it's all like smoke and mirrors and everything but they were saying one of the things like they these psychics and everything they'll tell you oh you you have an idea for a book or you're working on a book and they're like oh yeah i do and it's like <laughs> but what people don't realize is everyone has that you know <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, and not just writing a book, but everything. I mean, I have I have so many ideas with the van. Oh, my gosh. It's like, I, what do I want to do with my van? You know, do I want to – I thought of doing a bunch of Halloween stuff and, like, going that way and, like, start doing scary stuff, more scary stuff on it and skulls. And, and maybe I could sell it to a haunt or something. I really would kind of like to just sell it. You know, because I just feel like I'm done with it. But I, yeah. but I do want to cover it still, and I want to get the waterfall going. But then I think it'd be fun to go with my wife on a road trip and just dive, drive down the coast to, all the way down to through San Francisco and L.A. and because it, it's it's so fun. But at the same time, I'm so removed from that that mental place that I. I kind of, I kind of don't want to go there. 
it's like it's so addicting. Like when I when I took my van out to put gas in it, and a couple of times I just drove it and drove back. But one time I just I had like Led Zeppelin one playing really loud, and I'm driving the van, and it's just like it, it just hits me, you know, and it makes me feel it's it's crazy. It's like just it's like it's like being on a drug, it's like the, you know, it's like you know. It might be like somebody driving their hot rod, their Camaro, or their their Dodge Charger down the road, that kind of feeling. But it's even more, it's even greater than that. It's I use it as an anti-anxiety thing. Becoming the clown and driving the van was an anti-anxiety thing almost. And and uh, but it's like I I feel I feel like almost beyond that now, and like I kind of. It's really weird. It's kind of a weird feeling now. It's almost like a, I mean, I spent nine months. This is crazy. Yeah. I went from being a maniac and I stopped singing. I stopped dancing. I stopped laughing and I didn't really talk to people. And uh, I did some stuff on YouTube. I was starting to do that. And all I did every day, almost while I was painting windows and everything, was listening to almost every kind of spiritual guru, spiritual leader you could imagine, from Eckhart Tolle to Wayne Dyer to, you know, all these new age people. And and then I started listening to like, you know, Hindu stuff and yoga Upanishads and the Dhammapada, Buddha, over and over and over, because I was trying to, <clears throat> I almost felt like when I was doing the manic stuff, it was kind of like Robin Williams. It's like he had everything. And look what he did. You know, he went yeah. crazy. Look at Michael Jackson. Look at all these people. It's like you could never have enough. I could never get enough tension. I could never get have that. And it was just it was starting to become really sour and almost like a weird feeling. Like these people that are rich and famous, you know, they're kind of like some of them, they get to that point where like, oh, my God, this isn't it. And so I started turning inward and it was just so weird. And then I started meditating every morning. I did this for nine months. Every morning for 30 minutes in the dark with my eyes closed. Every day, yeah. every day for nine months. And I did, you know, and it was so freaking hard because my mind was always racing. You know, I was in this just stream of the clown, crazy wild man. Could ne I was always thinking, oh, the future, you know, if I could if I could just get that or have that, I'd be happy, you know, and it was just like I was always going, going, going. And then, uh, but then when I was meditating after a while, I, you know, because I was doing the same thing with the meditation. It's like I'd watch all these YouTube videos, like, oh, I've got to learn how to do it right. I've got to, you know, I should use Vipassana meditation, or maybe I should do transcendental meditation, or maybe I should do that. And so I really wasn't changing, even though I was quiet and, and not being wild. My mind was still at that. And then after a while, I realized I don't want freedom from anxiety anymore. And I lost my desire for stuff. And I realized kind of what I was, which is basically I'm just consciousness. I'm not an artist and I'm not a man. I'm not, you know, I have, you know, I am, I am Scott Campbell and I am all this stuff, but I'm actually this other thing, which is just an observer. And that's just what I learned. And then, so then I stopped meditating because it was like, I stopped searching. I start, I stopped reading books. And so I've been coming kind of back from that, like, so I'm kind of halfway back where I'm more social now and I'm doing the YouTube videos and I'm laughing and entertaining people and stuff. But at the same time, I still have that sense of it doesn't really matter that much how many views I get on my channel. It doesn't matter how rich I become. I mean, it's, yeah. it's important. I want, to feel, I want to feel comfortable and I want my family to have nice coats in the winter so and warm and I want to be able to eat or go out and enjoy my life. But it's not that important. It's not as important as knowing that what I am. But before when I was doing the whole extremo thing, it's like I had no sense of that at all, sense of myself. You know, it was all like my self-worth and everything I was was based on 
people's reaction to me as extremo or what I was doing. So that's basically why that's the real story behind that, like why he quit. And yeah. it was challenging. One thing that's funny is I didn't used to drink beer, but after I meditated, I started drinking beer, which I thought was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't drink that often, but it's yeah. And then I realized, too, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I'm vegan because I'm vegan. It doesn't imp it doesn't improve me at all. Or because I no. do drugs, it doesn't make me a better person. I realize I can't improve who I am. I can't. There's nothing I can do to make myself better. I mean, the role that I'm playing, yeah, I can improve my skills and I can get better and try to be more kind and interactive with people and friendly and teach people stuff. But that really doesn't improve the core of what I am. That's how I feel. I feel like I can't really do anything to hurt my internal observer so i'm definitely in a better place than i was before i mean it was just, yeah it was just you think like a lot of artists you know kind of like i mean that sort of it, it kind of sounds like a lot of the stuff i hear and sometimes i feel where it's like you, you know you feel like you can't get what you want like no matter what you get in a way when you're you're an artist you know what i mean like you think well this will this will fulfill you or this will, you know, like when I guess get this, everything can be good. And then you get there and you're kind of like, well, if I can just get that, everything will be good. You know what I mean? Oh, is that yeah. kind of what drove you into that kind of thing? It is totally true. It's totally true. It's like, there's nothing you can do. You're never going to get there. You know, you are yeah. because it's, I mean, I kind of had that opportunity to, experience that because I was getting kind of famous around town and I was getting known and I you know I juxtapose magazine and I've been in the local papers and I did yeah. on TV and you know and 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 uh, I was starting to have art shows and get a name and and uh, it's not like I was famous but I was popular definitely and locally definitely I was known as a local character people know you know i mean now after two and a half years you begin to fade like if i went out now and said i asked 10 people hey have you ever seen that clown that drives the car around town you might get a couple people but three years ago it would be seven people out of ten you yeah. know people because i was doing it every day but you can never I think for me, for me, I always felt like if I had this or if I had that or if I could get this or, you know, then I would be happy. But you never yeah, yeah. you never get to it. And I think that's what drives people to suicide. These these people that are rich and famous, they or they they turn to drugs because they do all this stuff and then they get it. And it just. It freaks them out. I mean, you think. You think Michael Jackson or Robin Williams was happier than you? He's probably, you know, we're all the same. Yeah. But for me, for me now, it's so nice because I can just, I can just make my videos and do my YouTube stuff. And I can just, because I know it doesn't, it doesn't matter. If my YouTube channel all of a sudden went away, it would not yeah. devastate me. I mean, I never thought I could not drive the van. You know, yeah. I had a I had a high need for recognition and excitement and creativity and you know emotional, you know, bursts of being emotional and just wild and I had you know, I had that. I never thought that I could not because before I could just jump in my van and go to the store and get bread or something. And I was yeah. just like an instant rush. And now, <laughs> you know, and I think it's from, it's, it's from sitting in silence. You know, I don't even like to say meditation because it has, comes with so much baggage and stuff. But just yeah. when I sat in silence, it's really confrontive. And it's like, because you can't stop your thoughts. Yeah. You know. I mean, the average person can't do it. I, 
I did it for a few seconds. Like I could sit for 30 minutes and maybe stop my thoughts for 10 seconds at the max. And then maybe I get some thoughts and then stop for three seconds. And, but just those few seconds, you get that sense of who you are. You know, it's just such a, to not have any feeling or thought or desire to not, you know, it's like they have that film, The Secret, you know, or What the Bleep yeah. Do We Know? Like The Secret, that book, really popular. And they say, you know, it's all about manifesting and, you know, you put it out there in the universe. Like, oh, you know, imagine you're in your new job, what it's going to be like. And, and they have yeah. that one part where they say, you know, you manifest it, you put it out there and which is totally a valid concept and it's real. I mean, that's kind of how I won the $10,000 partially is I, a year before that I asked for $10,000. Isn't that weird? I said, I want, I want to get $10,000 for a piece of art and I got it for that contest. But anyway, so it's like, it's like I, you know, you, in the secret they say, oh, imagine your hands on the wheel of your new car. You know, what would that feel like? But there's something greater than that. Imagine you didn't want a car. Imagine yeah. you didn't want anything. And you had no desires for anything. And people like, you know, it's so foreign for the human mind to conceive of that. But I'll tell you, it feels damn good. <laughs> it feels yeah. so good to not want anything. To not want to, to not desire to not crave. I mean, if something good comes along, or if I have a really good dinner, or some type of experience that's really uplifting or exciting, and it comes to me, I'm gonna enjoy it. But, yeah. to, but to go after that, to go after that excitement or that adulation or that attention, because what you're experiencing now is so diminished compared to what you think you're going to have when you get that. It's like you could have a problem in your life. Like you could have this really asshole boss or something. Or you could be living with someone you don't care for. And then you think to yourself, God, if, if they would just go away or if I had a different boss or my kids would do what I wanted, I'd be so happy. But then once they do go away, you're not happy still. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. And and even if you get something that's really incredible, like a really cool car or some type of piece of equipment or the latest camera or whatever it is, it only lasts for about six weeks. That rush, it, 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 even that, like a car, because it just, it fades. I mean, the stuff that's lasting that really is, you know, there's like, there's different types of happiness and, you know, material stuff is like the first one, but, uh, there's, I think in like modern psychology, the second one is, you know, like feeling like you're part of a team or a group, you know, your job and stuff. And then the third one is like when you're really uh, fulfilling a purpose, a big purpose, almost like a worldwide purpose or something, and you're helping and being a part. I mean, that gives you a lot of fulfillment and happiness, and, like teaching people. Yeah. But but like in the um, in Hindu stuff, they talk about a fourth one, which is what I'm talking about, which is when you don't want anything, when you just realize what you are, it's like the fourth, like in modern psychology, there's three, but in, and, the, and in modern psychology and in, in, in Hinduism, it's the same, you know, the first three are the same, yeah. but then in Hinduism, they have the fourth one, which is, you don't give a shit. I think like, what's his name? Jack Nicholson said, you know, something about worry, you know, it's like the best place to be is where you just don't give a fuck. And not in a negative way, but just like it just it doesn't matter that much. But I was so wrapped up in in uh, in needing approval from others or I mean, yeah. my whole self-worth was wrapped up in what people thought of me. And, you know, and, and, it, and it's not like I because I'm talking about this, I'm going to that place and I feel really good. But I have days where I go unconscious again and I kind of feel, you know, not that gray or something. But it's nothing compared to how I was before, where I pushed out all my present time moments. I just like could never, I, could, I was never happy. I could never 
I never felt like content. You know. So. Yeah. That's cool. So. I think I think it kind of comes full circle from you know talking about becoming the clown and everything and, and kind of how you move that. I mean, we definitely could keep, just keep talking forever, but I think we'll probably have to have you on again and uh, maybe <laughs> like wrap up tonight. <laughs> well, it was so, really great. It was really great. Yeah, but don't hang out because we always kind of chat a little bit after we, we end the broadcast. But um, so Scott, where can uh, people find you online? Where do you want to point people to? Uh, just my YouTube channel. Okay, and there is a link in the description, so you can just click on that. And I really I would would recommend everyone check it out because I mean I, I really dig his channel, and that's why I reached out to him because I just became a fan. I think he commented on one of my videos a while back, and I don't know I don't always like click on people who are following me, but I man I for some reason I did, and I'm like wow this guy's really doing something cool. So so awesome. And then uh, anything else, Scott, that you want to tell people about? No, just the channel and if you want to learn window painting or I do sketching videos sometimes too and I answer everybody's questions no matter what. If you have a question, just write in the comments section and I'll I'll answer your question. All right. And uh, so as far as me, you can find me at CircWorks. Well, you're on my channel, so you know where to find me. I'm doing the 100 Days of Making Comics vlogs every day. Uh, so there's that. And then uh, what about you, Jeff? Uh, JeffLafferty.net is my website. You can find me there and my YouTube links and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, you guys don't forget about the uh, newsletter. The description is down underneath the this video, and uh, it's just a, a little uh, notification I can send out before uh, each live show, so you guys don't miss the live show. So sign up for that. And that's it. All right. Thanks to everyone in the chat. I know we didn't really <laughs> refer to it much in this episode, but uh, we do appreciate everyone watching and everything. And we'll see you guys uh, next week. Later. Bye, everyone.